Hi everyone. I've just received this uh, in the post today. Uh, this is a monitor calibration thingy bob. Start again. Hi everyone. I've just received this in the mail today. Uh, so this is. Oh, shut off. Hi everyone. I've just had this delivered. Uh, this is a monitor calibrator. So I thought I'd do a quick video on monitor calibration, which is really, really important. Um, and actually something I've never done before, but something I should have done a long, long, long time ago. But I've only now finally got around to buying one of these. And it's so, so important. You can see behind me here, I've got my laptop connected to my monitor. Um, this monitor is something I got, I've had this since long before I moved to London. Uh, but while I was in London, I couldn't take it down with me. Uh, so it just always stayed at my dad's. But now that I'm back home in Carlisle, I'm finally able to connect my monitor, which is great. Gives me extra workspace, bigger screen to work on my photography. Um, however, um, when I connected it up, as is to be expected, I noticed that my photos looked completely different on my laptop to how they did on the um, on the monitor. So it's really important that I calibrate both my screens so I know that they're both consistent and both giving me the right information, the right colors, everything. Um, and even if you're just working on one screen, um, you should always calibrate your screen anyway so that you know you get inaccurate colors. But just to give you an example of how important calibrating your monitor is, I remember when I was in Peru, and this one particular photo which I wanted to share on Instagram, um, it was a photo of Huacachine in the desert, and I transferred the photo from my laptop to my phone so that I could put it up on Instagram. And as soon as I viewed it on my phone, I couldn't believe how different it looked to how it viewed on my on my monitor on my laptop and um, I even sent the photo to Jeff Bartlett's phone the photographer who was running the workshop I sent it to his phone and it looked different again uh, just the, the 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 color of the sand looked different um, between each device uh, some devices it looked more yellow some more orange and it was a big difference so yeah it is really really important to calibrate your monitor so you know you're getting the accurate colors the right uh, brightness and all of that so that's what i'm going to do now this particular one is the spider 5 pro um from what i gather i believe the spider ones are the ones to get they seem to be the best ones and uh, this particular one um reads the ambient light as well so it takes the ambient light in the room into account and if the light then changes, um, it will notify you. So you know you're always working in a consistent environment. So as I've said, I've never used one of these before. So I'm going to do that now. And I'm going to go through that with you so you can see how easy I hope it actually is. Okay, so I'm sat down on my laptop now. Uh, first of all, when you open the box, it'll give you a link to download the software that you need. Uh, so I've done that. So when you and first I've open the software, the device, it's it'll all give you this up, ready to go checklist to go through first to make sure everything's set up and ready to go. So first of all, you need to have warmed up your monitor, so it needs to your monitor needs to be switched on for at least half an hour. Um, you need to make sure there's no direct light uh, shining onto the screen, and uh, then just making sure um, you haven't got things like. Uh, auto brightness set on and just basically reset your display to its factory settings that kind of thing and then obviously just plugging it in uh, so that's all good to go uh, and I've got two obviously I've got my monitor connected as well first of all I'm just for this video I'm just going to do my actual laptop and then I'll do the, my monitor after that Pretty simple, it's a laptop. Next.
Microsoft Surface, that's correct. So click next. Okay. Uh, okay, so this is telling me what the ideal settings are for my laptop. Um, okay, so it gives you the recommended settings automatically set to that, so that's all good. So I don't even have to do anything there. My room light I have switched off, so that's good. All ready to go, pretty simple. And then there you go, you have to actually then place the device onto your monitor. So it does open up easily like that. And then you literally hang it over your monitor. Um. <laughs> Oh, it does pull, it does pull, that's good. I was gonna say, how can it go so low? But yeah, you just pull that. And that looks perfect, it's balanced. Let me just check it is, yeah. Yeah, that looks perfect, so we're good to go. So it will then flash different colors on your monitor and measure these and just wait for it to do that, which only takes a couple of minutes. And then once it's done that, it'll tell you to remove the device from your monitor and click finish. And that seems to be it. How easy is that? Now it's just asking me to save that profile. That name's fine. I'll just save it as that. And that's it. I actually can't believe how simple that was. So now it gives you the chance to sort of preview your results. So puts a image on the display. Um, so this is my monitor as it is now calibrated. So I'm currently looking at the calibrated view. Click the switch button for the uncalibrated view. So this is my monitor now. If I click switch, it'll show me it before I calibrated it. There you go. That's how it looked uncalibrated. So you can really see the difference. This is before and this is after. So here you can see what a difference it does make. And I'm pretty sure once I come to do my big monitor, I think the results are going to be even bigger. So yeah, that gives you an idea of of how important it is. And it was so simple to do. I couldn't, I, um, um, I really didn't think it would be as simple as that. I didn't think it would be difficult, but um, I'm impressed with how easy that was. So there we go, that's it done. It was really, really simple to do. For some reason I ha had it in my head that it, calibrating your monitor is something that would be you know, very technical and a bit kind of difficult, but with that device, it was so simple. So really pleased with how easy it is to do. And uh, yeah, so both my screens are calibrated now. Uh, my images look consistent on both devices. When I first connected my monitor to my laptop recently, um, when I came to edit my photos, they just looked totally different on the on each screen. So you can't edit a photo in that environment. So thankfully I've got them both calibrated now and I know that what I'm editing is accurate. There was one extra step with calibrating the larger monitor there and that was just adjusting the brightness. It gave me a, a target brightness and then all you do is just adjust the brightness of the monitor until it's at this target that it gives you. So again, that was easy and straightforward. And the only other thing to know is that um, I've lowered my blind to darken the room. However, to record this video, I have got my, my room light on just so you can see me for recording this video. But when I was calibrating the display, I had the light switched off. So I had the light switched off and the blind down just to darken the room because it's, it, it does tell you and it is best to do it in a dark room. Um, also, 
then when I come to edit my photos, I'll be predominantly doing it in the same setting. So I'll have the, the blind down and the light off um, just to darken the room. There's still light getting through, so it's not pitch black, um, but it is dark and it is best to do it in a dark environment just so you're not getting light reflecting onto the screen and things like that. And also when you're viewing your monitor, you should be looking at it direct on, like not looking at it from an angle and things like that, obviously, because even things like that can affect the how you see the image and the lightness, brightness, especially I remember when I had my MacBook Air, it if you tilt the screen forwards and backwards, it makes such a difference to how this how the lighting on the screen looks. So again, just things like that are important to bear in mind when you're editing your photos. But yeah, if you're editing photos and you haven't yet calibrated your displays, then I highly, highly recommend that you do so. There's no point in editing an image if the colors you're looking at on your display aren't accurate. And it's especially important when you come to print your photos. Um, for example, if you're looking at your image on your display and then you come to print it, and you think the printed photo looks completely different to how it looked on the screen, it might well be that you haven't calibrated your monitor. So it is very important. And as I found out through doing it here, it is incredibly easy to do as well. And as I've said, I've used the Spider 5 Pro. Um, it's the only one I have used, so I can't compare it to other ones. Uh, but the general feeling I get just from word of mouth and reading things online and things is that the Spider 5s seem to be the ones to go for if you want the best uh, results. So um, I'll put a link below uh, for anyone who wants to get one of those. There'll be a link in the description if you want to buy one of those. And either way, as I said, definitely make sure you're calibrating your monitors because it's so important. But that's it for this video. I hope it has been beneficial to you. I know this video has been kind of different to my usual kind, I guess a bit more technical, uh, but I do want to do videos like this as well. Um, I, want to, I want to make my videos as helpful to other photographers as I can. And this is a key part of photography as well. So as well as me just going out and taking photos, I'd like to do things like this as well, which I hope um, will help you. So. Do let me know in the comments what you think and if you'd like to see more videos like this and then and then I can do that if that's what you'd like to see. Uh, but other than that, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you again soon. Bye.